Hi, today's lesson is to do with percents, fractions, decimals. Percents occur very commonly in problems to do with interest, both simple and compound interest, and profit and loss. We shall look at a variety of problems involving these concepts. But first, let's talk about percents, fractions, and decimals. The word percent means part of 100, cent being the word for 100 as in century, centurion, centenary, bicentennial, etc. So if I say I have 20%, it means I have 20 parts of 100 parts of a thing. For instance, 20% of 10 is 20 parts out of 100 parts of 10, which is the same as saying 2 out of 10 parts of 10, which is of course 2. So 20% of 10 would be 2. Simply put, a percent is comparing a number to 100, or it's a ratio of a number with 100. So x percent is the same as the fraction x over 100, or the ratio x is to 100. So we've already made the connection between percents and fractions. Any percent, say 34%, can be written as a fraction with the denominator 100. Similarly, if I give you a fraction and I want you to express it as a percent, I could give you the fraction 3 over 10. To express this as a percent, I would need it as a fraction with denominator 100. So I would multiply both numerator and denominator by 10, I would get 30 over 100 and that becomes 30 percent. So converting a fraction to a percent would require rewriting that fraction as an equivalent fraction with denominator 100. Another example, the fraction 3 over 5. How do I write this as a percent? Well, I need to make 5 into 100, so I multiply both numerator and denominator by 20 and I get 60 over 100, and therefore this is 60%. So the fraction 3 over 5, or 3 fifths, is equivalent to 60%. So that takes care of the conversion between percents and fractions. How about the conversion between percents and decimals? So percents and decimals. Well, percents are already a kind of decimal because, say, 30. 4% is actually 34 over 100. And we know how to write 34 over 100 as a decimal because the denominator is a power of 10. So it is 0 0.34 as a decimal. So writing a percent as a decimal is straightforward because you have a denominator of 100 implicit in the percent. Similarly, writing a decimal as a percent. Suppose I give you the decimal 0 0.5. We know this is 5 over 10, so I multiply numerator and denominator by 10 to make it 50 over 100, which becomes 50 percent. How about the decimal 0 0.02? Well, I know that this is 2 over 100 because it's to the second decimal place, and 2 over 100 is clearly 2 percent. So conversion between percents and decimals is also straightforward. So we now know the equivalence between percents, fractions, and decimals. And you should be equally comfortable dealing with any one of them. So much for the preliminaries. Let's calculate some simple percents. What is 30% of 24? So I write 30% as a fraction. So 30 over 100 of 24. That's the same as 30 over 100 times 24. You want to find out 30 over 100th of 24. That means you multiply 24 by the fraction 30 over 100, which is 3 tenth of 24, which is 7.2. Let's look at another way of doing this. So let the answer be x. X is 30% of 24. And I set up a proportion. 30% means 30 is to 100. And 
that should be the same as x is to 24. So I can solve this proportion and I get the same equation. x is 24 times 30 over 100 as I did before. So both interpretations will of course give me the same answer. Next question. What percent of 20 is 12? 12 is to 20 is x is to 100. So x is compared to 100 just as 12 is compared to 20. Again, I need to cross multiply. I get x is equal to 12 over 20 times 100. I can simplify this in many ways. I end up with 60%. Note that I wrote the percent as x over 100. That's the key thing here. 20% of which number is 8? Let x be the number. As usual. I set up my proportion. 20% of which number is 8? So 8 is the numerator and our number is x. 8 is that part of x which equals 20%. Solve for x. x is 8 times 100 over 20 which is 40. So 8 is 20% of 40. 8 is 20% of 40. That's the answer. Mary is a used car salesperson. Her commission is 5% on sales more than 1000, but less than or equal to 3500. And for sales over 3500, she gets a commission of 7%. What is a commission if her sales amounted to 8000? Just put down this information. If her sales S are between 1000 and 3500, she gets a 5% commission. And for sales over 3500, she gets a 7% commission. For sales between 0 and 1000, she gets no commission. So if her total sales are 8000, the first 1000 don't get her any commission. Her commission is going to work on the amount between 1000 and 3500 and the amount more than 3500. So how much of her sales are between 1000 and 3500? Surely $2,500 of sales. For that, she gets a commission of 5%. So that's a commission there is 5 over 100 into 2,500. What is the amount of sales over 3,500? Of that 8,000, what is over 3,500? That's dollars 4,500. For this amount of 4,500, she gets 7% commission which is 7 over 100 into 4,500. Add these two commissions and you get her total commission. 5 into 125, that's 125. 7 into 45, 7 into 40 is 280. 7 into 5 is 35, that's 315. And I add them and I get $440 of commission. The answer is B. I broke up her sales into three parts. The first 1000 gets no commission. The next 2500 gets a commission of 5%. And the last 4500 gets a commission of 7%. A laundry operator decided to buy 500 gallons of detergent for $700. The price of the detergent went up by 25%. The operator decided to reduce the quantity of detergent to be purchased so as to incur no additional expenditure. That means he wanted his total cost to stay the same, $700. By what percent can he reduce the quantity to be purchased? Right. So his total cost is equal to quantity times price. And here he doesn't want his cost to change. So cost 1 must equal cost 2. By cost 1, I mean the first quantity times the first price should equal the second quantity times the new price. So we have our equation. So let's call the first quantity Q1 and the first price P1 since we don't know either. Now, what's the new price? The price went up by 25%. So P2 is P1 plus 25 over 100 P1 because it's going up by 
I can take P1 common, I can factor P1 and I get 1 plus 25 over 100 left behind in the bracket, which is P1 into 1.25. So that's important. The new price P2 is 1.25 P1. This is a technique we'll always use. If a price goes up by 25%, it will be 1.25 times the original price. And we need to find Q2. So P1 is cancel and I get Q2 is equal to Q1 divided by 1.25, which is Q1 divided by 5 by 4, which is Q1 divided by 5 into 4, which is basically 4 Q1 by 5. Since I want the percent change in Q1, let me express this with a denominator of 100. So I'll write this as 4Q1 over 5. I'll multiply numerator and denominator by 20. I'll get 80Q1 by 100. This is 80% of Q1. So Q2 is 80% of Q1. That's what I've found. The new quantity is 80% of the old quantity. And the question is, by what percent can he reduce the quantity? Well, from 100%, it has come down to 80%. That reduction is 20%. 100 minus 80 is equal to 20%. So it's a reduction of 20%. The answer is D. Important question. Note that I did not use any of the initial information of 500 gallons and $700. I don't need any of that. Because the changes in price are given in terms of percent. So I can find the change in quantity in terms of percent too. If the question involves some actual values, like by how many gallons did the quantity come down, then I would have to involve the 500 gallons and the $700. But the question was purely in terms of percents. So I did not have to involve actual values. Rustam has X eggs. He sells 12 of them at a profit of 10% and the rest of the eggs at a loss of 20% and breaks even. How many eggs did he sell at a loss? So he has a total of X eggs. And how does he sell these eggs? He sells 12 of them and he sells the X minus 12 of them at different prices. So he's selling the X eggs in two lots. He sells 12 of them at a profit of 10%. So there's 10% profit. And he sells the rest of the eggs, that is x minus 12 eggs, at a 20% loss. And finally, he breaks even. Since we are involved with profit and loss here, we need to know his cost price and his selling prices. There are actually two selling prices and there's one cost price. So let's call the cost price P. Cost price per egg equal to P. So what's his total cost? This cost is price into quantity. So this cost is Px. That's what it cost him to buy the X eggs. What are his selling prices? Selling prices. Selling prices are given as percentages of the original cost price. He sold 12 of them at a profit of 10%. The cost price was P. The profit is 10%. So the selling price must have been 1.1p. P plus 10% of P, which is P plus 0.1p, which is 1.1p. I just worked out 1.1p orally. This is 10% profit. And he sold the rest at a loss of 20%. So let's work this out because we've never done it before. So it's P and a loss of 20%. So P minus the loss. 20 over 100 P. You can again factor P and I get 1 minus 20 over 100, which is 1 minus 0 0.2, which is P into 0 0.8. So the selling price at a loss was 0 0.8 P. This is the 20% loss. So now we know the original cost price and we know the two selling prices. Cost. This cost as we know was P into X and his earnings were 
12 eggs at 1.1p. So 12 times 1.1p plus x minus 12 eggs at 0.8p. We are told that he broke even. That means his total cost was equal to his total earnings. And so we have our equation. Px is equal to 12 into 1.1p plus x minus 12 into 0.8p. P is common to all terms, so I can divide throughout by P and the P's vanish. And we have an equation involving just X. X is 12 into 1.1, that's 13.2, plus X minus 12 into 0 0.8, that's 0 0.8X, minus 9.6. Let's solve for X, so I get 0 0.2X is equal to 3.6. And x is equal to 3.6 divided by 0 0.2, 36 divided by 2, which is 18. So there were totally 18 eggs. What is 0.1% of 0 0.01 square? 0.1% means 0 0.1 over 100. Off. So I multiply. Of 0 0.01 squared. So what is 0 0.01 squared? That is 1 over 100 squared. 0 0.01 is equal to 1 over 100. So 0 0.01 squared is 1 over 100 squared. So let me simplify this further. This becomes 0 0.1 over 100 into 1 over 100 squared, which is 0 0.1 over 100 raised to 3. 100 times 100 squared the same as 0 0.1 over 10 raised to 6. 100 raised to 3 is 10 square raised to 3, which is 10 raised to 6. We saw that in the exponents chapter. When I divide by 10 raised to 6, the decimal point will move to the left 6 places. So it will become 0 0.0000000. 000 I have to introduce six more zeros between the one and the decimal point. And that answers E. At a fundraising dinner, the organizers increased the donation price of a plate by 25%. Fearing that this might drastically reduce the number of people attending, they then reduced the price by 25%. What percent more or less than the original price was the final price of the plate? So far, I've been taking original price or original quantity to be P. Here, since they want what percent more or less than the original price, I'll take the original price to be 100. So then whatever value I get is directly compared with 100, I immediately get the answer. So let the original price be 100. Let's see what happens to this original price. They increase the donation price by 25%. So what is 25% of 100? It's 25. I increase 100 by 25, I get 125. So first new price is 100 plus 25 equal to 125. Then being true politicians, they then reduce the price by 25%. They reduced what price by 25%? This new price. So I need to find out 25% of this new price. So I need 25 over 100 times 125 and they reduced it by this. So what would be the new price? So the second new price would be the price minus the reduction. I can take the price common which is 125 and I'm left with 1 minus 25 by 100. So I get 1 25 into 0 0.75. I'm doing this a few times so that you quickly realize that a reduction of a price of 25% is just multiplying by 0 0.75. A reduction in a price of 35% would be multiplying by 0 0.65 and so on. This is the key step. It's 125 into 3 by 4. What's 3 fourth of 125? Well, 3 fourth of 120 is 90. And 3 fourth of 5 is 
3.75. So 3 fourth of 125 is 93.75. So the final price after an increase of 25% and then a decrease of 25% of that price ends up at 93.75. Let's answer the question. What percent more or less than the original price was the final price? So let's write both. Original price was 100. And the final price was 93.75. So what's the increase or decrease? From 100, it went down to 93.75. That's a change of 6.25. And this change, 6.25, is out of original of 100. So I'm comparing the 6.25 with 100, which directly gives me the percent. And the answer is 6.25 percent, E. At the opposing camp's fundraising dinner, the organizers first decreased the donation price by 25 percent and then increased the price by 25 percent. Okay, so these guys went the opposite. Of course, they're the opposing camp, so they have to do everything opposite. They're true in spirit to their position. So let's see, we take 100 as the original price and first new price is a 25% drop. So it's multiplying 100 by 0 0.75 as we saw. So the first new price is 75 and then they increase this by 25%. So the increase will be 25% of 75 and the new price will be the second new price will be 75 into 1.25. This is when you increase by 25%. This is when you decrease by 25%. So what's this new price? It's 75 into 1.25. Hey, this is the same as what we got last time. Last time we got 125 into 0 0.75. So it's 93.75 like last time. I'm not going to multiply again. So again, 100 goes to 93.75. That's a change of 6.25. Since I'm comparing to 100, that's a change of 6.25%. And the answer is 6.25% less. It fell by 6.25%. Interesting. So it didn't matter whether the price went up first by 25% and then came down by 25% or it went down by 25% first and then came up by 25%. Well, this seems to be a real world example. It really doesn't matter which political party says what. The final result is always the same. In 2011, the annual exports of a company increased by 25%. In 2012, it increased by 20%. If the increase in the exports was $1 million in 2011, then what was the increase in 2012? Here, I need to use the number because they actually want the increase in dollars. In 2011, there was an increase of 25%. So if the original exports were X, it went up to 1.25X. And what have they said this is? If the increase was $1 million. So this increase is $1 million. That is 1.25x minus 1x. That is 0.25x is equal to $1 million. So what's x equal to? Well, obviously x is four times that because 0.25x is a quarter. So x is equal to 4 million. So I know now the original exports in 2010. In 2010, it was 4 million and it went up 25%. So it went up 1 million and in 2011, it ended up being 5 million. It was 4 million, that was x and it ended up being 5 million. Now it goes up 20% in 2012. So what is it at the end of 2012? Well, it's a 20% increase of 5 million. What's 20% of 5 million? Well, this is one fifth. So it's one. 
So the 20% increase of 5 million is also 1 million and it will end up being 6 million. But of course, all they're asking is what was the increase? That's again 1 million. The answer is C. If B equals 30% of A and C equals 10% of B, then which of the following equals 20% of C? B equals 30% of A. So B is 0.3 A. 30% of A means 30 over 100 of A, which is 0.3 A. C equals 10% of B. So C is 0.1 B. 10% is 10 over 100, which is 0.1. Which of the following equals 20% of C? And all the answers are in terms of A. Well, here I have C in terms of B, but I have B in terms of A. So I'm going to replace this B by this expression. So I'll rewrite C as 0 0.1 into 0 0.3A. Because that's what B is. It's 0 0.3A. C is 0 0.03A. Since it's 0 0.1 into 0 0.3, that's 0 0.03. But that's not the question. The question is what equals 20% of C? So 20% of C is 0 0.2 into 0 0.03A. 0 0.2 represents 20%. So that becomes 0.006A. I need to write this as a ratio upon 100. So what is 0 0.006? That's the same as 6 over 1000. To get the decimal point 3 places to the right, I need to multiply by 1000 and divide by 1000. So I get 6 over 1000. But I need to write it as something over 100. So it's 0 0.6 over 100. Now I have my answer. I've managed to express it as a fraction with denominator 100. So let's go here. And 0 0.6 over 100 A is just 0.6 percent A. It's the same as saying 0.6 percent of A. That is my final answer, D. According to a survey conducted at the local coffee shop, every customer likes either cappuccino or tea, but not both. Males who like cappuccino form 30% of all customers. Females who like tea are 25% of all customers. Given that the ratio, blah, 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 what percent of this? So let's just make our table. Males, females, cappuccino, tea. Males who like cappuccino form 30% of all customers. So this is 0.3 T. Let T be the total number of customers. Males from 30% of all customers, so that's 0.3 T. Females who like tea are 25% of all customers. Females who like tea, 0.25 T. Given that the ratio of male to female customers is 3 is to 2, what percent of the female customers like cappuccino? So out of a total of 5, 3 out of a total of 5 are male. So male are 3 by 5 of t because the total is t, which is 0 0.6 t. And female are the rest, 0 0.4 t. So the male total is 0 0.6 t. 0 0.3 are here, so I get 0 0.3 t here. The female total is 0 0.4 t. 0 0.25 are here, so I get 0 0.15 t here. Now my table is complete and I can read out any bit of information they want. What percent of the female customers like cappuccino? How many females like cappuccino? 0.15 T. Is that an answer? There is no answer like 15% because they haven't asked what percent of the total are females who like cappuccino? What have they asked? They've asked what percent of the females like cappuccino? Females who like cappuccino are 0.15 T. Total number of females are 0.4 they want this ratio. What percent of the females like cappuccino? I multiply this by 100, get rid of the t's, and I get 15 divided by 0 0.4. 
the same as 150 divided by 4, which is 37.5%. A 6-inch pizza's regular price is $25. If the cost of the pizza is directly proportional to its size, let's first make sense of that. What do you mean by the cost of the pizza is directly proportional to its size? It's a circle. The pizza is a circle. What is the size of the pizza? The size of the pizza is its area. So size here means area of the circle. If the cost of the pizza is directly proportional to its size, 6 inch pizza means the diameter is 6 inches. That's how pizzas are classified by their diameter. So from the diameter, I need to find the area. So if the diameter is 6 inches, the radius is half, 3 inches, and the area is pi r square, which is pi into 3 square, which is 9 pi. So it's 9 pi inches square. That's the area of the 6 inch pizza. So an area of 9 pi inch square costs $1.25. Next, I have a 12-inch pizza. So, let me calculate the area of a 12-inch pizza. Diameter is double. The radius is also double. The area will be pi r2 square, which is pi into 6 square in this case. It's 36 pi inch square. Clearly, as the radius doubles, the area goes four times because you're squaring the radius. So, the area of the 12-inch pizza is... Area is... 36 pi inch square. Note that the cost is proportional to the area. So if a 9 pi inch square pizza costs $25, what will a 36 pi inch square pizza cost? Well, this is 4 times. So the cost should also be 4 times. So it will be $100. The weekend deal on a pizza is $50. So the regular price of the pizza was $100. The weekend deal is $50. What is the discount? Well, it's halved. So the discount is 50%. The answer is D. In a shop, the mark price of an article is worked out in such a way that it generates a profit of 33 and a third percent. What should be the discount percent allowed on the mark price during a sale so that the final profit made is 20 percent? So let's go stepwise. Let's take the cost price to be 100. What will be the mark price? It's a 33 and one third percent profit. So the marked price will end up being 133 and one third. Now I want a discount on the marked price, a discount, so that the final profit made is 20%. So the final profit should be 20%. So the cost is 100 and the profit is 20%. The final price should be 120. So this is my final price. How do I attain this price? I give a discount on the marked price. And the question is, what is this percent? So what's the actual discount? Well, the actual discount is 133 and one third minus 120, which is 13 and one third. That's the discount and we need to find out the discount percent. So I write my ratio. This discount, 13 and one third, is on the marked price of 133 and one third. So if the discount percent was X, what is x? Let's get rid of these one thirds. I can write this as 40 over 3 over 400 over 3. This turns out to be 1 tenth. x over 100 is 1 tenth. So x is clearly 10%. The discount on the mark price should be 10%. Answer is C. Stephen and Marlin invested the same amount of money for the same rate of interest for two years, but at simple interest and compound interest with annual compounding, respectively. At the end of two years, Stefan received $200 as interest and Marlin received $220 as interest. What was the annual rate of interest? Let's understand what's happening. Stefan's is easy. He receives 200 as interest over two years and it's simple interest. So every year he receives 100. 
dollars hundred a year as interest. This Stefan simple interest. What about Marlin compound interest? Well, compound interest works in a different way. In the first year, it's just simple interest because your principal is just the principal. But in the second year, the interest is added to the principal and this becomes your new principal and you earn interest on this entire amount on the first interest plus on the principal, which is why she has received more interest than Stefan. But anyway, in the first year, since their principles are the same and the rate of interest is the same, she also receives dollar hundred in the first year. We know that Stefan will receive the same amount in both years, second year two because the total was dollars 200. Marlin, however, in the second year receives 120. What is this 120 made up of? It's made up of the interest on the principal plus the interest on the interest. And we know the interest on the principal. That's what she got in the first year, dollars 100. So this dollar hundred and twenty can be written up as dollar hundred plus dollar twenty. This is the interest on the principal, same as Stefan, and this is the interest on the interest. And what is the interest? The interest is hundred. Hundred is the interest on the first year, on which twenty is the further interest. So, what's the rate of interest? Well, it's 20 on 100 into 100 to make it a percent. That's 20% interest. So, they both received 20% interest. The answer is D. Billy buys balloons in bulk at 25 balloons for a dollar. So, what's the cost price of a balloon? Well, it's how much he pays upon the number of balloons. So it's, let's convert to cents. It's 100 cents over 25. It's 4 cents. The cost price of a balloon is 4 cents. How many should he sell for $13 to earn a 30% profit? So they've given us the profit. Profit should be 30%. So let's find the selling price per balloon. 30% profit, so the selling price will be 130% of the cost price. 130% of CP, which is 1.3 times 4 cents, that's 5.2 cents. So the selling price per balloon has to be 5.2 cents for him to make a profit of 30%. How many should he sell for $13? So now he has earned $13. at 5.2 cents per balloon. So this earning is obviously price into quantity. So find the quantity, divide the earnings by the price. So the quantity is $13, that's 1300 cents over 5.2 cents per balloon. And this works out to 13 goes here, 0.4. So it's 100 over 0.4. That's a thousand over four, which is 250. He has to sell 250 balloons. The answer is E. Anya deposits 2102 savings accounts for one year. One part at 6% and the other part at 9%. If $159 was the total interest earned, how much was deposited at 9%? So say X was deposited at 6%. So 2100 minus X was deposited at 9%. Now it's simple. You just calculate the interest on the X and on the 21 minus X, add the two interests and equate it to 159. That's the long way to do it. And it's a no brainer. Let's see something cleverer. She's earning 6% on a part 
and she's earning 9% on the other part. So she's surely earning 6% on everything. She's earning 6% on 2100 plus she's earning 3% on a part. Which part? The part that's earning 9%. I've broken up the part that's earning 9% into earning 6% and earning an additional 3%. So this makes my calculation easier. So let's call this part Y, the part that earns 3% additional interest. The Y deposited at 9% is the part that earns the 3% additional interest. 159 is the total interest. It's 6% of 2100 plus 3% of y. 6% of 21 is 126 plus 0 0.03 y is 159. So 0 0.03 y ends up being 159 minus 126 that's 33 and y ends up being 33 divided by 0 0.03 that's 3300 divided by 3 that's 1100 and the answer is d a much neater way of doing it because the variable appears in only one place a certain steel manufacturer estimates that the cost of raw material in the coming year will decrease, whereas the cost of processing the raw material into finished products will increase. If the current expenditure on raw material forms 60% of his entire production cost, what will be the percent change in his production cost for the coming year? So, production has two costs. Raw material, raw material plus processing. And raw material is 60% of the cost. So this is 40% of the total cost. So if this total cost of production is P, then this is 0.6P and this is 0.4P. That's the situation in the beginning. Now how does it change? In year 2, the raw material cost will decrease by 15%. So the raw material cost will be 85% of the original. So the new raw material cost is 0 0.85 into 0 0.6p and the new processing cost is will increase by 10%. So the new processing cost is 1.1 times the old processing cost which was 0.4p and if I add these two costs I get the total cost for the new year. New total cost. So let's add them. I get 0.85 into 6, 86 of 48 plus 0.3, so 0.51 and 1.1 into 0.4 is 0.44. When I add these, I get 0.95p. So this is p attached to each. So the new total cost is 0.95p. The original cost was p. What's the change? The change is p minus 0 0.95 p which is 0 0.05 p which has a percent is 5 percent of p and the answer is c